That's the power of WVU Medicine. DePaulo's Pizzeria, located at 1403 Grand Central Avenue in Vienna, welcomes you to try their all-you-can-eat buffet. Join us Monday through Friday, 11 to 2, as well as Sundays, 11 to 2 and 5 to 8. Enjoy our salad bar, pizza, pasta, subs, cheesy bread, calzones, pepperoni rolls, and desserts. We are proud to be a local, family-owned business and look forward to serving your family at DePaulo's. Christmas is less than 10 weeks away. At Crown Decor and Gifts, we started earlier. Our elves are working daily to create some of the most beautiful Christmas displays. From gingerbread and peppermint to our new large Grinch display, we're ready to help you deck your halls. Maybe your theme is a white winter wonderland, or our pink and red velvet celebration is a little girl's delight. You may even like our homespun Christmas theme evoking memories of yesteryear. So hop in your sleigh and head our way, and it's already on sale for you. Welcome back to your Christmas happy place at Crown Decor and Gifts. At Cox Family Pharmacy, we've built our reputation by taking exceptional care of our patients. Our team takes the time to get to know you and your family so you can get the help and service that you deserve. Thank you for making us your pharmacy for over 17 years. Cox Family Pharmacy, we're trusted. Tired of long wait lines or no one answering the phone at chain pharmacies? At Cox Family Pharmacy, a real person answers the phone and we do our best to make sure you and your family are well taken care of. Choose Cox Family Pharmacy, we're trusted. There's a blood shortage and we came up to Dead Lover's Point at midnight on Friday the 13th. Lame. Guess I'm gonna waste all this blood by dying in a predictable horror movie, way. 50% of Americans like watching blood get spilled in horror movies, but only 3% donate it. When was the last time you donated blood? Here's the memo, get your memo. Here's the memo, get your memo. Here's the memo, get your memo. For more info, visit wvbhi.org. Fall means cooler weather and a deal from CAS Cable tastier than pumpkin spice. Right now, new customers can buy one month of internet service from CAS Cable and get a second month free. Work, stream, and game from home with confidence that your connection will be fast and reliable. Take advantage of this unbelievable deal this fall from CAS Cable. Get it? Unbelievable? Leaf? Like fall? Are you going through a difficult divorce or separation and struggling to come to an agreement on custody arrangements for your children? Raber Law Offices is here to help. Justin Raber is an experienced and compassionate attorney who understands the sensitive nature of custody battles and will work tirelessly to protect your rights as a parent and ensure the best interests of your children are met. Don't let custody issues cause more stress and anxiety. Contact us today to schedule a consultation. Call 304-893-9145. Do you have what it takes to be a firefighter for the city of Parkersburg? Applications are now available to join our team. Interested applicants should be between the ages of 18 and 35 and in good physical condition. The exam date is December 16th. For all the details and to download an application, go to parkersburgwv.gov firefighter or scan the QR code on the screen. Serve your community and start a rewarding career with the Parkersburg Fire Department. Application deadline is December 6th. I tell you what, being at JR's Donut Castle Donut is the best. Why's that? Because they're always fresh and made from the best ingredients. I'm telling you, people love us. Uh... Plus, we get to hang out with all the other great stuff like pepperoni rolls, muffins, and cookies. They're going to eat us. There's pies and cakes and brownies. They're going to eat us. It just doesn't get any better than being at JR's Donut Castle Donut. Ah! See you around, pal. What a lucky guy.
And greetings from an overcast and slightly breezy Williamstown mm -hmm. as we've got high school football for you here tonight on CAS 45 as the homestanding Williamstown Yellow Jackets welcome LKC rivals the Doddridge County Bulldogs. High school football presented as always by WV Medicine Camden Clark. He's bad, he's nationwide, he's Mike Cameron. <laughs> I am merely cheap sunglasses, Brian Guthrie. And we've got a matchup of teams that are they're headed for the single A playoffs, Mike. Williamstown currently fourth, Doddridge County currently tenth. They are uh, LKC rivals. They have played each other in both the regular season and the postseason mm -hmm. three times since 2019. And this is a game both of them need to get to ensure themselves of a home game. Correct, sir. I, I, it, it just it boggles my mind because it I bottles the mind, doesn't it? We, you know, we live in this area, so we see them. We've covered them a couple of times. Um, this is a tremendous football team here at Williamstown. They are worthy of uh, of getting another opportunity to defend that state title. Um, you know, I talked about it before the game that they played last week against Tyler Consolidated, a game against two unbeatens, and I said at the end of that, or beginning of that game, oh, that's going to be a good game. It's going to be a good game. Williamstown proceeded to dissect them and take them apart. I cannot, I mean, I when I after that game, I think the the, the thought that I had was single A teams beware. Uh, you do not <laughs> want a trip to Williamstown because no. this team is ready for you. Um, I, I, it boggles the mind that they're rated number four. I don't know. There's probably some algorithms and mathematics yeah. behind all that. Computer stuff. Uh, this is a tough team. Now, on the other side of, this, uh, of, the, of the coin there with Doddridge County, rough start. They've, they're starting to turn now. So I have a feeling this could be another nice little chapter of this, of the, of this rivalry. Williamstown, a 51-6 uh, win over Tyler Consolidated last week. Doddridge coming off a 20-10 win over East Hardy. Uh, Williamstown unbeaten last year and 8-0 thus far this year. Doddridge 6-2 and this season. Their only losses the first two games of the season to Wahama and St. Mary's, who are both top five teams in Class A. We've got a jam-packed pregame show for you tonight. We're going to talk to Chris Beck. We're going to talk to Bobby Burnside, head coaches of both these teams. We're even going to throw in a little extra for you here before we get to kickoff. Sounds good. Hang on. It's going to be good. Doddridge County and Williamstown high school football right here on uh, CAS 45 presented by WVU Medicine Camden Clark. We're back in a minute. Healthy relationships. It's how we nice think about bit. primary care at Camden Clark. When you choose one of our providers, you're starting a relationship with access to award-winning specialty care, diagnostics, and my WVU chart. Our state-of-the-art user-friendly electronic medical records that's at your fingertips. Caring for you for over 125 years, we're the only local community health care providers backed by the power of WVU Medicine. Healthy relationships start here. Rejuvenation Laser and Skin Center wants to welcome three new state-of-the-art machines to their location. The physique targets stubborn areas that regular diet and exercise have trouble with to help you get the results you've been looking for. The Tetra is a CO2 laser that offers fully customizable skin treatments to help improve fine lines and wrinkles, scars, and more. The Pico helps remove tattoos and dark spots by offering laser skin resurfacing with no downtime. Call 740-538-9943 to book your appointment. Welcome back to the pregame show. Brian Guthrie here with Williamstown head coach Chris Beck. And Chris, uh, coach, you're you're on a, a tremendous heater with your team. You guys are undefeated this year. You've only had two close games. What do you what do you like about your squad so far? I really like that we're getting better every week. Um, we had some injuries and stuff, adversity earlier. We're getting healthier every week. Uh, but those early weeks, we're able to develop some depth. Some guys are able to figure out what we're trying to do. So what I really like about the team is our leadership and how we're getting better every week. I think every week we've gotten a little bit better. I think last week was probably our best game of the year in all three phases of the game and in terms of our alignment, assignment, and effort. So uh, hopefully we see that again tonight and keep getting better. Yeah, your last week really an impressive uh, game against Tyler Consolidated. Uh, this week the LKC gauntlet continues with Doddridge County coming in here, a team you guys have run into several times over the last three years or three or four years. Seems like you're going to see him in the playoffs again, probably. So uh, what do you see about the Bulldogs on tape? So just typical Dodgers team in terms of, man, they're well coached, they're physical, uh, very sound on defense. I know that Coach Burnside's made a handful of uh, deep playoff runs recently, but this may be the best coaching job he's done. They're a young team. They're probably starting four or five sophomores on one side of the ball or the other. Uh, but they're on offense, they're more multiple, probably what they have been in the past. They throw a little bit more. 
and they distribute the ball more. Usually there's a featured back. This year they got two or three backs that are featured, and they got a really good receiver, number six. Uh, defensively, I think they've given up 25 points over the last six games. Really fundamentally sound, fly to the ball, uh, and always well prepared. So you guys are pretty much locked into the playoffs. You're just playing for, for seeding now. You're going to have a chance to defend your championship. How do you keep the guys focused? Is it you, When we talked before the Marietta game, you're like, I don't have to focus these guys. They want to do what they've never, what, you know, nobody's ever won back to back here. Is that still kind of the riding theme? Yeah, that's still the case. Uh, there's three goals we have. Uh, one, to be state champs, two, LKC champs. And the third one is to have a positive impact on your teammates, your family, your school, your community. So for us tonight, uh, we could check one of those off. When we win tonight, I'm 99% certain we're going to be LKC <laughs> champions. Unless something, Hard to argue against yeah, it. <laughs> something, unless something crazy pops up, I think we'll win a tiebreaker against Bahama. I think they're likely end up undefeated in LKC as well. So, I mean, there's a lot on the line tonight. You could be LKC champions again, and you can get your seating well. But for these guys, they don't need those things. Uh, those are nice things to play for, and they are certainly aware of them. But usually every week they're ready uh, to play. What's your keys to the game? What do you got to do? We've got to get them off the field. They're going to want to control the clock, control the ball. A four-yard gain is a win for them. A long drive is a win for them if they punt or get points or whatever, a long drive. We've got to speed the game up. We've got to create some more possessions for both teams. And if we're able to get them off the field on third downs and keep ourselves in third and manageable, um, we don't want to get a lot of third and longs against this defense. So if we can get third and manageable and get stops on defense, um, it could be a good night. Great. Good luck tonight, Coach. Thank you. Go Jackets. More of the pregame show coming up after this on CAS 45. It's game time, and One Community Federal Credit Union is here to help you tackle your financial goals. With our convenient and secure electronic banking and mobile services, we're taking our customer service experience to the next level. Plus, our CD rates are some of the best around, so you get more bang for your buck. When you need a loan, One Community can get you a great rate and a fast decision made locally. It all adds up to us being the Mid-Ohio Valley's winning team. One Community Federal Credit Union, online at onecommunityfcu.org. Welcome back to the pregame show here on CAS 45. Joining us now, Coach Bobby Burnside from the Doddridge County Bulldogs. And, Coach, first off, congratulations. You've got a, a, a really good season rolling. You stumbled a little bit out of the gate yeah. against two really good teams, but you've got it together now. You know, uh, I mean, you kind of said it. We were 0-2, and uh, we put a lot of hard work in. we got a got a young team. got a lot of sophomores starting, and, you know, just started to jail and come together and shown good improvement and growth. So right now you're you're pretty much set to get into the field uh, for the postseason. Just kind of seeing where you shake out, where you're going to land, and you got to come to Williamstown here late in the season. A team that you guys are familiar with, both regular season and postseason, the last few years. What have you seen on tape from the Jackets? I mean, honestly, you know they're the returning state champs. They uh, they return a lot of starters. They're a very talented team, and it's a real opportunity for us to come in here and and, uh, you know, get to play a game like this and, and then work on things afterwards. What would it mean to your guys to come in here and win this game tonight? It's been a couple years since you've beaten this team, so what would it mean to win not only in their stadium but, but with this team tonight? I mean, that would, be, that would be very big, you know. It's a big challenge, and accomplishing that would, would definitely set us up for a nice run in the postseason. What do you got to see out of your team tonight to win this game? We've got to make plays. I mean, you know, they're an explosive team. They're well coached in all three phases. We have to make plays. So when we get opportunities, we need to, you know, make some plays, whether that's on offense or defense or special teams. All right, good luck tonight, Coach. All right, thank you. More of the pregame show coming up after this on CAS 45. WVU Medicine Camden Clark's pediatric team is here to help you turn belly aches into belly laughs. Now accepting pediatric patients at our new location in South Parkersburg. It's big care for small patients. And that's the power of WVU Medicine. WVU Medicine Camden Clark's pediatric team is here to help you turn tears into playground cheers. Now accepting pediatric patients at our new location in South Parkersburg. It's big care for small patients, and that's the power of WVU Medicine. Welcome back to coverage of high school football on CAS 45. Uh, getting ready for Williamstown and Doddridge County, and we wanted to take a moment to talk to the radio voice of Williamstown. Uh, I'm very proud of this gentleman because I happen to be the program director to the Classic Rock Z106. Dr. David Hall with us right now. Uh, we're very glad to, to be here in this brand new basic facility and everything, but uh, another year where these Yellow Jackets are just churning on. Tell us about this uh, 2023 squad. This is probably the most explosive squad I've seen in my 13 years doing radio. 
any time, any place in the field, they can score at any time. Three, four, five plays, they're going to get the hole. They got, I believe, one of the best quarterbacks I've seen in 13 years in Maxwell Melissa. He plays like he invented the game. You know what I mean? He really does. He's that good. The running backs, Joy. It's a complete team. The offensive line had some injuries. They're all coming back. Uh, a new one's coming back next week. We'll keep that a secret. But this team's coming together. It's going to be strong. Uh, but they're not going to finish probably first the way things end. But you know what? You don't worry about where you place. What's worry about who you're going to play. You've uh, seen this rivalry quite a bit over the last several years, and they seemingly have been playing not only in the regular season but in the postseason as well. Uh, what's your call on tonight's game? I'm doing Kirk Curb Street. I won't say, but I think if uh, whoever – I think Williamstown's got to do it. they got to play hard. The Doddridge is going to try to extend this game. They're going to try to have long drives. Williamstown doesn't want to let them have that. They're going to put blitzes on this quarterback. You're going to see on the Williamstown side, they're going to try to get uh, get out there early, make no mistakes, no interceptions. And I think in the trenches they win it. I think if they play their game, a lot of people will be happy. But I'm going to keep it neutral. But I think that right now this is as good as team. It's a game. Like if they play checkers against each other, people will be on the sideline getting upset and getting rowdy. That's how kind of a game it is. Uh, you recently changed over to CES Cable. What's your what's your thought on that? Never been happier, man. I tell you, 20 plus years with another company, and what happened? They came in, and I got Jim over here to to get it to hook up. It it is probably one of the best things I did. I feel really happy, and I saw I made a post yesterday, and everybody was like, "I want that! I want that!" So I got to talk to Jim now. He's going to get busier, and he's going to have to hook up more lines. <laughs> So everybody's calling me. I'm like the go-between guy. You you're the, you're and the I'm gonna see, now. Yeah, I'm gonna see if CAS will pay me a little on the side. We'll see about that. But I think tonight, right now, what you guys are gonna broadcast, by the way, you guys do a great job. This is gonna be a good game. This is basically really important for not a LKC to win the title. Number two, also for this team, Doddridge and Williamstown, they're trying to take themselves to the higher ranking in the playoffs. Well, have a great call tonight. You guys, too, and have fun and come down. We got all kinds of drinks. We got pizza, hot dogs, everything you have. So, you had me at pizza. Yep. Yeah, I tell you, we'll get that. And like I said, if I can get Jim to get busy here, well, there'll be, I'll hook everybody up, and uh, we'll get it rolling. Sounds good. Appreciate yeah. your time, uh, Doc. Yeah, all right. Mike, have a great call. All right. You, too, okay, as well. Thanks, guys. We'll, we'll be back with more. Pre-game show continues on CAS 45. It's spooky season, so I'm getting my costume ready. But you don't have to be afraid of slow internet speeds or high prices with internet from CAS Cable. Right now, new customers can buy one month of internet service from CAS Cable and get a second month free. This is one deal you can count on. Ah, ah. Darkness has descended upon Williamstown as we close in on kickoff. Brian and Mike high atop the press box here in Williamstown getting ready for the Doddridge County Bulldogs at 6-2. and two, Taking on the 8-0 homestanding at Williamstown Yellow Jackets. It is Pink Out Night sponsored by WVU Medicine Camden Clark who we are uh, very fond of. They've handed out pink cowbells and, and all kinds of stuff. We thank them the for that by the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the more cowbells the better. Uh, uh, a good contingent of fans here from Doddridge County tonight. Got to uh, say, uh, congratulate Williamstown High School's girls programs. Uh, there was a presentation from the WVSSAC, the Girls Champions Cup, the most successful girls programs for the 22-23 school year in Class A belong to Williamstown. So they got a nice um, plaque and uh, the Champions Cup presented to uh, Principal Jason Ward and Athletic Director Jill Bryant. So congratulations to the Williamstown uh, ladies who... Uh, did all kinds of great stuff, uh, cross country, track and field, basketball, volleyball. Volleyball two-time yeah, two state, uh, state champion. You can't swing a dead cat around here without hitting a state championship <laughs> trophy. So <laughs> so that's, uh, that's how that works. Williamstown will be kicking off to get this game underway. I think they did win the toss. I think they deferred, though. Two men deep for Doddridge County. Doddridge, again, stumbled out of the gate, lost to uh, St. Mary's, who is currently 7-1, and, and lost to Wahama, who is currently 8-0. So 
It's not like you Good lost to a couple of slouches. Down. Williamstown, on the other hand, at 8-0, and have not played a game closer than 35 points except for St. Mary's, which was 12-8, and the Marietta game that we saw here that came down to the very last few moments. What an incredible game that was, too. <laughs> incredible. If we get something close to that, we're in good shape. That's tonight. right. Back deep will be Heilman for the for the Bulldogs, and I did not see the far number. High kick, and we are underway, taken at the 15. It's Heilman. Heilman will bring it out, Heilman number one. Goal. Senior Brandon Heilman. Number 11, Landon Dodger, number So we will see what the Doddridge offense has in uh, lined up here for tonight. And, and we, all three people we talked to for the pregame show said we need long drives. Doddridge needs long drives. Williamstown's got it. Wants to get them off the field. We know that they can score uh, Williamstown definitely in a short amount of time. And so yeah, that's almost a moral victory right now. If Doddridge County can sustain a drive, maybe even score off of it, that would be that would be a, a big battle for them. Dixon out of the shotgun will hand it to Heilman right out of the gate. He finds the corner, takes a shot after picking up about four. Pops right back up. It'll be second down for the Bulldogs. It's a good game. Just went around the, the left end there. Got good blocking. It was a good job by Landon Dodrell to just kind of hold his ground and delivered a nice lick at the end of it, but not before. Five yards for Heilman. Dixon runs to the sideline to get his play and then comes back over. Doddridge has not beaten Williamstown since 2019 when they beat him twice, once in the regular season and once in the playoffs. They did not meet in 2020. 21 and 22, Williamstown took both uh, all four of those meetings in those two years. Not since uh, Hunter America oh from boy. the backfield <laughs> for Doddridge County did they beat the Jackets. Completed pass out near the first down marker. Stretching, trying to get there is, I believe, Landon Thomas, number six for Doddridge. Forward progress is going to put him just a hair short, I think, Mike. Landon Thomas um, on the pass reception for the Bulldogs. Somebody lost a hat, too, on that uh, on that play for the defense. Oh, you got to wear your hat. So, uh, but yes, uh, good job there. Uh, I think he actually, no, they're going to move the chain. Oh, they will move it. I thought he had it, but then yeah, went back forward progress would have got it for Yeah, him. so. I, I think it was just uh, the white hat doing the eagle eye there saying, yep, go ahead and move the chain. Rex it was Foster is close. our head official tonight, correct? You are correct, sir. He wants to reset the play clock here as it was winding down to the end. Fresh set of downs for the Bulldogs. At the Williamstown, or excuse me, at their own 40. And now official wants to stop it and... Line that clock. Now we're ready. All right. Here's Dixon again out of the shotgun. Jacket showing blitz. Extra man comes. Dixon unloads down the far sideline and off the fingertips. Just out of reach. Everything about that play was good. He got the blocking that he needed, it was, and they covered the blitz. Uh, a good pass by Dixon just off the fingertips. But Sage uh, Landis, the senior receiver, just off his fingertips, as you said, just laid out for it, just and, and he was the only one that was going to be able to catch it. Yeah. It, was, it was laid yeah, it was, in there very nicely, a just a throw. little bit long. It was a good throw. Uh, he's, they're going to wish they had that one back. So second and ten after they take the shot downfield, Williamstown brought some pressure but could not get home. And Dixon will keep it on the ground, hands it to Heilman, and Heilman's going to get a whole lot of nothing. You know, Aiden Corbett in there on the stop as well as Maxwell, or excuse me, Lewis Goodnow. We're seeing a little bit of a departure of the Doddridge County that we knew for many years because there was ground and pound. <laughs> We've seen three pass plays now, and one was a deep one. If he could have hauled that in, that would have been a major gain. But it's a, it's a very diverse offense right now. For they're, they're, they're loading up to run, and they also are very capable with the passing game. And Williamstown's got to stay on their toes throughout this whole contest. So third and nine after the short run from Heilman. Dixon again out of the shotgun. Receivers each way. And he wants to throw. Now rolls out of the pocket. Corbin in pursuit. Slings oh! across his body and it's picked. 
Coming back the other way is Lewis Good now, and he will be knocked out at the 45, and it's a turnover for the Jackets. And on the other side of the coin, they did everything right on defense that time. Good pressure on the quarterback, causing him to get out of the, out of the pocket. Uh, they made him rush a little bit. And they threw him across the body. Yeah. And uh, and again, I, that would have been if he would have been incomplete, we would have called that the good old coverage sack. But yeah. no, he had nowhere to go. And and good now with a good just just snatched it right out of the air and uh, turnover, put the ball into the hands of Maxwell Melissa now. The explosive yellow jacket offense will come out in a traditional I formation and hand off to the second man through. And that is Lincoln Joy. And Joy will be upended for a minimal, minimal gain, about a half a yard, second and nine for the Jackets. It's like they just want to take all their tendencies and just throw them out the window, <laughs> go start off with the very first play under center. Uh, but we know that they're a capable offense. Uh, we're going to see we're going to see pretty much every page of the playbook. Tonight. Maxwell Melissa has uh, had an outstanding season, both throwing and running for Williamstown this season. Arguably the best player in single A in the state of West Virginia. Uh, definitely. And he will throw on second down and good gets now, it to good again. now, cutting across the middle, and he will be brought down at the 26. Big chunk for the Jackets. You don't need any time. He got the, he got the snap. Good now had the route. He uh, connected quickly. Good now did the rest on that one. But, you know, again, a very short passing game. Doesn't take too much time to materialize, and a great gain on that play. Good now is the wide out to the top. Joy the setback along with Melissa. Out of the shotgun on first down and Melissa will run it himself. Going off tackle, trying to stiff arm his way there and he'll be knocked out of bounds around the 10. It'll be first and goal for Williamstown. Well, he delivered a blow on that one at about the 20 yard line. A, a nice stiff arm right into the side of the helmet of the defender for Dodgers County. And they still never really brought him down. He got out of bounds, uh, but yeah, now first down and 10. Uh, first down and goal, probably. I was gonna say the ball is setting on the, you know, the far side of the 10. So you would think it just inside, but right. they're gonna go ahead and give him first and goal from the 10. So here's Melissa. Handing it off to Joy, breaking tackles, and we'll get down to the six. That was a good ball fake, because I actually thought Melissa kept that one on the read. Uh, Joy got a, got, got a couple of good yards on that first down game. Williamstown trying to cash in on the early turnover from the Bulldogs as we close in on eight minutes to go here in the opening quarter. And Williamstown's knocking on the door and they'll bring in a second back. Rex Anderson, 24 lined up out there and it'll be a read option and Melissa will keep it himself and work his way down to the four. He held on to that Back ball forever. <laughs> and he just waiting for something okay, to materialize. I don't think it really ever did. And he got stopped inside the or, uh, inside the five yard line. Got, you know, good yardage on that one, but it's gonna set up now a third and uh, long really for a uh, third and goal situation. Anderson will stay in the game. We saw against Marietta, whenever Anderson lined up at fullback, he was getting the football. And he will line up at fullback here with Melissa under center. Let's see if I've done my scouting correctly. I did not. Joy will get it, and he will be stacked up and dropped for a loss. Well, that was a great job. Uh, number, was it number five? Number five and seven, it looked uh, yeah, like. Just, just diced right through the offensive line. For idle and down. idle. Oh, the they, Bryson idle and Christian idle. So they, they must know each other. I was yeah, they're familiar with each other's work. <laughs> yeah, they just, just knifed right through the line, made an immediate stop. So fourth and goal at the five. Off the interception on this end of the field, Williamstown now struggling to finish off their drive. Fourth and goal from the five. Here's Melissa to throw. He's going to be pressured, steps up in the pocket. Now he's got a lane, and they're going to stop him. He leans over and stopped at the one. He dropped a shoulder and put everything he could behind that lick, and it was just a great job by the defensive back to hold on Holy just smokes. enough to keep him out of the goal. Stretched for the pylon and couldn't get it. And it'll be first and 10, Doddridge at the one. The defense holds, so 
Good news, <laughs> you kept them out of the end zone. Bad news, you're in the end zone. Well, you know what? Coach Burnside takes that every day. That's exactly what he said. He wanted to keep them. He wanted to keep the offense off the field, obviously keeping them from scoring. It's now the other side of the objective, he wants a nice long drive now. But, boy, on the one-yard line, their back's against the wall. They'll stay on the ground, and they got out of the end zone. They're going to mark them at the one for no gain. Stood him up and knocked him back, but just enough to stay on that <laughs> other side of the line. So here's where here's where I play coach, Mike, or let me let me make you play coach. Okay. You throw one. You just rip one down the field and hope somebody take I, a shot. I don't know. I, <laughs> I you know what? Do that same um, route that you did on the first one that just was off the fingertips of the receiver. He had a step on the defensive secondary. It's going to have to be a go. He can't hold it that long. Yeah, it's got to be <laughs> quick though. He doesn't really, and he doesn't have a lot of space to work with. Dixon will be under center with a power eye behind him. They'll go to the fullback right into the teeth of the defense. Nothing there but maroon jerseys. And again, no gain. I, you know, I, again, that's why we're up here, and that's why we're not down there. But I don't know. If, uh, on, that we, on the first down carry where nothing happens, I'd go maybe do a sweep or something just to see if you can give yourself a little bit more space. If you're not going to be able to get the first down, at least get yourself something to get a little bit of room for your punter. Sophomore quarterback Bryson Dixon with third and 10 at his own one. High formation behind him. They will stay on the ground and that will be Brandon Heilman. Senior running back got a little bit of room out to the five. But they're going to have to kick it away, but you kept Williamstown out of the end zone. You burned another couple minutes off the clock. There you go. <laughs> Objective, uh, check the box there. No, I mean, that was a good seam right there by Heilman. He got a pretty good push on it. It's going to be fourth and about five now, maybe fourth down and six. Um, yeah, that, if anything, just like you said, a minute's off the clock and now a little bit more room for your punter, which is Brandon Davis. Freshman punter Goodnow stands at his own 32-yard line. Davis, kind of a knuckleballer. Goodnow's going to take it on the fly at the 30. Oh, he's with got room to run and will be knocked down at the 20. You know who made the tackle? The punter. <laughs> no, he didn't. That was that was Bryson Idle. That I was uh, I was, I got my numbers messed up there a little bit but boy when he made that first catch he had a lot of room to the right side but uh, boy, I, this uh, Dodgers team has pretty good team speed they really closed the gap on that one pretty quickly so we'll see the Williamstown offense back on the field 4-11 left here in the first no score second time with the football for Williamstown got it on a interception could not cash it in now they'll get it back with only 20 yards to go to pay dirt and a three receiver set for Melissa on first down. Fakes to Joy is gonna run it the whole way. Got room if he can get that. Got pass the that corner. First tackle. Now some room at the 10. Oh. And run out of bounds. Just inside the five. First and goal, Williamstown at the down four. The four yard line. And yet again, he delivered a lick on that on that uh, straight arm there. Number 11, Push Jared Trent. You got, it was enough to help stop him a little bit, but you, you don't want to move backwards on a tackle like that. We'll see what Coach Chris Beck dials up here on first and goal from the four. Melissa out of the shotgun. Joy next to him. Joy will kick oh. the fake. Melissa will finish it off. Touchdown, Williamstown. He held again, held on, held on, held on. Saw the seam that he needed. Didn't need much, uh, but it was enough for him to get into the end zone. First points of the game to the Yellow Jackets. Looks like they're going to possibly go for two. I don't see a kicker running on the field. They're just going to go ahead and go for two. You don't uh, win games. 51 to 6 by kicking extra <laughs> points. Well, they're going to spread the field out. Four receiver set now. It's not your typical two point conversion offense with trips to the left. Now, 
Good now in motion. Melissa will roll to the left, unloads, and has good now for the two point conversion. 4 0 1 left here in the opening quarter. As you watch the one Community Federal Credit Union replay, Melissa to good now. That's good for two. It's 8 0 Williamstown. You're watching high school football presented by WVU Medicine Camden Clark on CAS 45. Healthy relationships, it's how we think about primary care at Camden Clark. When you choose one of our providers, you're starting a relationship with access to award-winning specialty care, diagnostics, and MyWVU chart. Our state-of-the-art user-friendly electronic medical records that's at your fingertips. Caring for you for over 125 years, we're the only local community health care providers backed by the power of WVU Medicine. Healthy relationships start here. It's game time, and One Community Federal Credit Union is here to help you tackle your financial goals. With our convenient and secure electronic banking and mobile services, we're taking our customer service experience to the next level. Plus, our CD rates are some of the best around, so you get more bang for your buck. When you need a loan, One Community can get you a great rate and a fast decision made locally. It all adds up to us being the Mid-Ohio Valley's winning team. One Community Federal Credit Union, online at onecommunityfcu.org. Kickoff taken around the 10 yard line by Doddridge. That's uh, Heilman again. Yes, it was. Yeah, Heilman again. And they'll start about the 23 yard line here on this second drive. Brian and Mike here in Williamstown, 8 0 Yellow Jackets in this LKC contest between the undefeated Williamstown Yellow Jackets, 6 and 2 Doddridge County Bulldogs. Again, and I just, I know I, I, maybe it's a bias on my part, but I, I see this team play a lot, and I just can't see how there can be f three other better teams than Williamstown <laughs> in single-A football right now. I just don't get it. I don't understand the algorithms or whatever. Uh, I just cannot see how that could be ranked fourth right now. This is a good football team worthy of repeat. Heilman on oh. first down will be dropped behind the line of scrimmage for about a yard loss. And Mike, you, you know, you referenced the, the the rankings. Williamstown has gotten to that point where you, uh, um, Wheeling Central used to be late 90s, early 2000s, where it was, if we're in the field, we're the team to beat. Whether we're one, whether we're 16, we're the team to beat, whether you like it or not. And it felt like some years they were like, let's see what we can do as a 12, you know, and just and go from there and then win the championship. So. Williamstown's the favorite, regardless of the number next to their name. I, I do agree. Just, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'd like to see them. Oh, nice. Right open down the middle of the field is DeHaven. DeHaven hauls it in, and he will be brought down in Williamstown territory as the Bulldogs flip the field. Number eight of the Bulldogs. DeHaven ran a great route, went right over the big yellow W, and he was hit on target perfectly in stride and another four uh, another 10 yards after the catch too the with a defensive secondary had to catch up with him what a tremendous a, route yeah. and a tremendous pass everything was good about that play found a hole in the zone and just kind of went right up and then there was nobody nobody deep so the bulldogs operating in plus territory for the first time tonight and they will stay on the ground and this is Seth, Seth Cass. Cass. Well, you know, they ran that route they earlier. They went. They actually went, uh, tried to get to the receiver that was on the left side of the formation last time. This time they threw it to the receiver on the right side of the formation. But that's the second time it's worked, uh, you know, when it comes to just getting open. That's the first time they made the connection, making the catch and everything. But that, that route's working right now. Williamstown's going to have to shore up the, a little bit of what's going on in their defensive secondary. Second and nine after the one-yard gain by Cass. Dixon calls for the ball, cuts it loose. His man fell down, and it's another pick. And that's going to be pick six. Carson Haynes is headed down the far sideline. Oh, they got and him. And he will be dragged down inside the 20. A second interception from Dixon. Oh. And, and just that was, like that, Williamstown's in business again. And that was just bad luck. The receiver fell down. If, he's, if he doesn't fall down in that route, he I don't know, he's got good position. He pro probably makes that catch. He falls down, though. Williamstown's cornerback there. What was it? Uh, Carson Haynes. Carson Haynes 
just took it to, and almost took it all the way to the house too. Uh, and he was just really, uh, you know, the lucky person right there uh, in, in coverage right there to be able to make the catch. Uh, he made good with his opportunity, but again, just bad luck for Dodgers County if that receiver doesn't fall down, that reception's made, or at least knocked down. So a second interception, Williamstown will try to convert into points. Technically, they didn't convert the first one into they points. They didn't get, yeah, they, <laughs> I get you. But, but still, it was a whole, we'll just like combine the sequence. <laughs> Melissa on the oh. quarterback keeper, little arm. Oh, and he will take it in for the touchdown. Tight ropes the far sideline, and Melissa has his second score of the quarter. He just, he's, he's got, really, he's got it all. He's got the power and the elusiveness. He got there in the open field about the 10-yard line, and he then was able to burst up to get that final couple of yards. What a great run by Melissa, and 14-zip. Uh, you saw it there on the One Community Federal Credit Union replay. It's just how does how does he hold it? Enjoys Red Basket <laughs> that long and then still get something out of it. They'll go for two. It'll be Lincoln Joy, and he will punch it in. Joy, Another two pointer for him, and at one fifty two here in the first, so Williamstown. Puts up another eight spot. Mark it eight, dude. 16 nothing Yellow Jackets. We'll keep it here, Mike, as uh, it's just uh, they had not like Doddridge had an opportunity early. They made a big stop. They just got a big play. Huge play. There's, you know, there's opportunity there, but um, you have to play nearly flawlessly against Williamstown, and you especially can't give them the ball twice. And maybe that was a little bit of pressing right there on the on that receiver's part. They wanted to make that good cut. Uh, uh, it was an obviously it was it was a quick snap. It was a quick throw out to him. I don't know. He just pressed him a little bit. Just didn't get his footing. Falls down. Williamstown. You just Williamstown's too good. Just like you said, Williamstown's too good to make Taking a mistake on jacket. you. They will make you pay and now, they did we, on that last play. We were down on the field earlier as Heilman will run this one back out across the 30. His best return so far oh. is he is dumped at the 34. But, uh, you know, we were down on the field earlier. It did rain during our setup and whatnot, and so Heilman there, there the may be some line moisture line on the field. Line. I didn't – I didn't – I wasn't like Ball trying to dig in or make any cuts or anything like that. Right, right the but uh, you know, it did rain a little earlier today, so the possibility of the field being wet plus you know, the temperature goes down, all that other it's exactly. meteorology because I don't <laughs> have to I don't want to have to explain it to you. I don't want to have to but, dumb uh, it down yeah, for you. I don't know, it's uh, <laughs> cumulus, uh, stratovarius clouds. So there's a forty percent chance of precipitation. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I think it did make a fact. It, it was. It was raining enough and uh, long enough during uh, while we were setting up there that uh, I think it will make a make a difference throughout the rest of the game. Heilman will be eaten up by Aiden Corbett at the thirty. Corbett's like, I barely hit him. He fell down, and that's. Uh, I mean, this is might be where we start to see the field Lost come loose a little bit if it's if it's wet down there. Is Heilman's feet just kind of came out from under him? And he also probably saw three burgundy <laughs> shirts coming his way and saying, "I can live to fight another day." Get down! Yeah. <laughs> Second and fifteen after the loss, and digging a hole early in this game is not how you want to try and beat Williamstown. Yeah, there was little to no stopping on that one. The two interior linemen for Williamstown in to make that stop. And Coach Burnside is giving one of the officials an earful over on the far sideline. They let the play clock run all the way down before calling a timeout. Their first of the half with a minute flat left to go here in this opening quarter. Doddridge's first timeout. We're brought to you by WV Medicine, Cam and Clark. Right. Uh, we check the Preston's Beauty Academy scoreboard there, 16 nothing. 
Couple of turnovers already. Let's, see. Let's put the game in a nutshell. Two turnovers, two touchdowns. Exactly. You're welcome. Cha cha. Ba boom. There you go. <laughs> Not much, uh, not much breakdown there. But you know, again, uh, if you're just joining us, listen, I don't get paid by the word, so <laughs> whatever. Uh, Dodgers County, I, I did not come in thinking that they were going to be throwing the ball and as effectively as they actually have been up to this point. I know it's been a, a sh relatively short body of work in this game, but they have the ability. They've got receivers. Uh, okay, yeah, they also have thrown two interceptions, but. I'm telling you, on that first drive, it was right off his fingertips. He makes that connection. Who knows what the rest of the drive looks like. They did connect on a long pass play on the next one, so they are capable of doing so. Um, Williamstown is still, even with a 16-point lead, needs to watch out for that because if you can connect on a passing game, you can get back into a game pretty quickly. So Coach Burnside maybe wanted a chance to settle his guys down. Second and 15 with a minute to go in this opening frame. And Dixon will go under center. Wants to roll out to the far side under pre under pressure and will put it about two rows deep That's in the stands as he just kind of had to get rid of that one. It'll be third down. Maximal rush on the coverage for the uh, Run those bootlegs and get him, you know, try to get him some space out there. But if the corner collapses on him and he's running for his life, throwing while you're running that way for a right-hander, not easy. Not easy, and, and and Williamstown can close the gap, too. We've talked about team speed on the Dodgers County side. Well, obviously, Williamstown is a pretty fleet of foot team, even with the <laughs> interior linemen as well. Uh, they can close gaps pretty quickly, uh, and uh, you could tell on that last play, the Dodgers quarterback was just kind of just trying to f figure out how to survive. So third and 15, Dixon to throw again. He rolls right into the pressure and just kind of chucks it out of bounds. And here comes the flag from Rex Foster, the head official. It's probably going to be intentional grounding. Uh, Williams, uh, was that 61? William Seitz yeah. just completely blew that play up. It, he, I mean, uh, the Dodgers quarterback rolled right into it, but uh, yeah, he won that battle. Offense number three. That's going to be lost it down, to too, is it not? Foul. Fourth down. And no, no receivers in the area. It was outside the tackle box, but there wasn't anybody even remotely close to that oh, one. So. Yeah, Seitz just blew that play up. And he, uh, again, just trying to make something out of nothing there, that Dodgers County quarterback. Uh, and, again, not a receiver in sight. So the Dogs will try to kick this one away and, and give their defense some room to work as they did the bend, don't break on the first drive <laughs> and got broke the last two. <laughs> Those turnovers, they'll, they'll hurt you every time. They'll bite you. They'll bite you. They'll jump up there and bite you. It's like a cobra. Yes. <laughs> Dogs to kick it away. Oh, and that one's going to be blocked and recovered in the end zone. Touchdown. That's a Williamstown touchdown. As Danner Hooper. Danner Hooper blocked it and recovered it in the end zone for a Yellow Jacket touchdown. It helps when you're six foot three. He was able to get full extension on that one high up in the air. I didn't think he was, uh, I mean, I thought there was enough space for that punter to get it, the, uh, the kick off there. But again, six foot three jumping up in the air. What a great job to swoop up, knock it out, and then also Got six points just for falling on it. <laughs> Gee, many Christmas. <laughs> so we'll go for two again. Williamstown has capitalized on all the opportunities given them, and here's Joy for his third nice two pointer of the night. That's Joy on the two yard uh, touchdown conversion. Uh, again. You know, break out the teletype, whatever. Message being sent <laughs> right now. This is a formidable team that's ranked fourth right now in class single A. Um, I don't know if that, what's going to change with that one, but hello, 24 nothing first quarter. So this is the ninth game on Williamstown schedule. Their last game is here against Wheeling Central next week. And that's uh, going to be that's, a widely attended uh, game. As, well, as you mentioned, you know, message being sent, hey, Wheeling Central, welcome to our house. And hey, 
And I do know I saw a couple of jackets walk by. There are at least four or five <laughs> players scouting. from they're scouting this game right now. Well, they've gotten an eyeful here in the first first quarter already here. 45 seconds left here in the opening quarter. 24 to nothing. Williamstown. Taking off for the and Doddridge County is in desperate need of getting something going that keeps Williamstown's offense off the field. It'll be Heilman, bounces off his pads. He's got to go back and get it and will wisely step out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Hey, that kicker for Williamstown was at uh, Jonah Bosgraf. He has pretty much hit the same spot with his kick every time. If you think, just let it go. That might go out of bounds, but they're not not—they're not doing it. They're, they're ma trying to make well, the play. Well, if, it, if, if they let it go and it stays in. That's true. <laughs> it's a live it's ball. It's a live ball. But, uh, yeah, he's he's placing the ball very nicely. So we're, we're seeing just a lot of great things right now. Every little faction of this team is uh, is is doing their job and playing well. The only the, really the only thing that I've seen Williamstown not do well up to this point uh, is allow that big pass play, and even with that, they've still been able to you know to limit what Doddridge County can do following that play. Dixon will go under center and power eye, and Corbett. Heilman is still going to be Corbett. eaten alive by Aiden Corbett. Immediate he power eye gives you two blockers. <laughs> And Corbett still got there as he, fast as the ball did. I was going to say, he almost beats the ball being put into the, the bread basket there for the runner for Doddridge County. And Winning I, that battle. Yeah, I think the Bulldogs may just want to let the clock run out on this quarter and uh, let her just, let's, let's, let's just go. Let's, <laughs> let's take a break. Moving on. <laughs> And that is I what they're going to do, and that's going to do it for the first quarter. All jackets so far, 24-0. You're watching high school football presented by WVU Medicine, Camden Clark on CAS 45. Rejuvenation Laser and Skin Center wants to welcome three new state-of-the-art machines to their location. The physique targets stubborn areas that regular diet and exercise have trouble with to help you get the results you've been looking for. The Tetra is a CO2 laser that offers fully customizable skin treatments to help improve fine lines and wrinkles, scars, and more. The Pico helps remove tattoos and dark spots by offering laser skin resurfacing with no downtime. Call 740-538-9943 to book your appointment. Thank you to our friends at CAS Cable for being our sponsors for Belfry Homecoming. Thank you, CAS Cable, for supporting the Parkersburg South Marching Band. Thank you, CAS Cable, for supporting Discovery World! WVU Medicine Camden Clark's pediatric team is here to help you turn belly aches into belly laughs. Now accepting pediatric patients at our new location in South Parkersburg. It's big care for small patients. And that's the power of WVU Medicine. Did you know that 90% of the American Red Cross workforce is made up of volunteers? That's why we're asking you to fall into service this autumn. You can help families affected by disasters big and small with comfort, food, and shelter. Collect life-saving blood, support military members, and much more. Even medical professionals can use their skills to help in times of need. Go to redcross.org slash volunteer today to get more information or contact your local Red Cross in Parkersburg. So change a life and fall into service with the American Red Cross. Back here in Williamstown, 24 nothing Jackets. Next Friday night, we will be on the south side. Erickson All Sports Facility as the Princeton Tigers are going to be in town to take on the Parkersburg South Patriots. Patriots just heard uh, are losing to Wheeling Park right now up on the island, 13 to nothing. But make sure you join us next week for more high school football. On second and 10, Dixon will try the screen pass. Gets that one out. And... Positive yards for the Bulldogs for the first time in a little bit as that one is complete to Seth Cass. 
Just get out. They got to find a way to get out into the open field a little bit. Those interior rushes, uh, Corbett's is putting a stop to that almost every time. They just got to find a way to get on flat, get down to the seam, see if they can get some, you know, some movement out in the open field. And they were able to on that screen pass. Good blocking, uh, holding up the defense as much as they could. Third and short. Let's see what they can do with this. Third and two at the 28. Doddridge desperately in need of first down. And I believe there's another play clock issue. Or no, we've got an official sending, sending Lincoln Joy to the sideline. Probably for an equipment something or... That must be an equipment something. So he will be replaced quickly. So a third and two for the Doddridge County Bulldogs. Hard, hard to say it's a big third down this early in the game, but this is a big third it's, down. It's huge. They'll stay on the ground, oh. and they're not going to get it. Again, that interior rush, uh, Corbett's and 59 was another one in there. Gunner Henry. Taylor Snyder, or no excuse me, Talon Snyder, can't get it. No gain. It's fourth and two, and on comes the punting unit again. Brandon Davis had his first, had his last punt blocked and recovered in the end zone for a touchdown. So I believe those coaches mentioned all three phases <laughs> also in the pregame. Oh, so they know they can get through. He rushed that one off, and that is a low line drive, and Goodnow is going to take it at the 45. Makes the first man miss and slides to a stop at midfield. All right, so the, the field's a little the more field's wet. than we thought. <laughs> the I think that pretty much confirmed it right there. He, he stopped as and uh, banana peeled to, the, to his booty. Some of my Yenzer friends would say, it's a little slippy. <laughs> Just tried to... Hit the brakes He there. went down. <laughs> he went down because it's slippy. <laughs> Still good field position, though. They're, on, they're in Doddridge County territory for a first down. Jackets with the ball back again. 11-02, second quarter, already leading by three scores. And Maxwell Melissa back to work. Nobody deep. Wants to That's throw. A problem. Near sideline, and Joy is open. Hauls it in. Makes a man miss. And has a lane to the end zone. Touchdown, Williamstown. I look, a 49 yard. I looked, touchdown. I looked at the defensive alignment right there. They had a 4 4, four linemen, four linebackers, and then they had the defensive secondary one on one with the receivers. And really, Melissa had his choice. There was another receiver wide open down there. See, right there on the 30 yard line, he could have thrown to him and it would have been you know, a quicker touchdown. But uh, nonetheless, it was still very effective there. Nobody back deep in the defensive secondary. Williamstown again made them. Now they will kick the extra point, and it is. That was Bri that was uh, Briley Jones. Homecoming queen, Briley Jones, <laughs> I, I believe, and she knocks it through for the extra point. And it is 31 to nothing. And Mike, this. Uh, uh, I don't want to say <laughs> it's getting away from them, <laughs> but it's starting to get away from them. I mean, it's no game is ever truly out of reach, in my opinion, as long as you're still in the first half. Because uh, if they if they can score 31 points in a uh, quarter in a minute, why can't you score 31 and points? And I'm okay. still so. I'm still open to the fact that they have a decent. Um, you know, passing connection there. They've hit, they almost hit on two long passing plays. They've got the one, and the other one went off the fingertips of the receiver. So they're capable that, you know, if you can, if you can connect on that play, you can score quickly, but you're right. It is definitely starting to become a little bit of an anxious moment for the Dodgers County Bulldogs. But we'll see if uh, they kick it right to Heilman again, as he has had it pretty much put right on his pads every time. And it will be Heilman again from the 18. There's the 30 and stood up Maxwell Melissa in there on the stop on special teams. And they'll start at the 33 yard line this time. Yeah, just I don't know if he really likes to not be on the field. 
he, he wants to be on the field for everything. Offense, defense, special teams, he's out there. It's a good bet you're going to see number seven on the field. So Bryson Dixon, again, a sophomore quarterback for Dodgers County, has shown some real talent here. But uh, it, he's just, you know, he's run into a buzzsaw here in the, the Williamstown defense today. Yeah, he's shown a very nice touch on that pass. Um, and if he's got the time to do so, that's been a, that's been another issue. Is they've not gotten a lot of time. Heilman, the deep man in the eye, but they will go to the up man, and that is Talon right. Snyder. That was a that was a good formation, nicely run on that play too, because it looked like it was going to go to the back that was uh, the Heilman, the eye yeah, yeah, Heilman on the eye man. formation. He went that direction towards the right. Nice inside handoff. It was a good ball fake too. So uh, good play on first down. Seemed like they got a lot more than four. Okay, I was going to say. Well, I mean, they originally had second down and six. Yeah, they're going to give them uh, give them five. So second and five for the Bulldogs. Nobody back deep and for Williams. Dixon to now. throw. Far sideline overthrows his intended receiver, Jared Trent. Uh, and again, with the defense being the way that it is, and he might have been hearing some footsteps on that play, too. Uh, I think he rushed that. The receiver had not really even finished his route before that ball was in the air. And over, over, uh, it was well over the mark. Dixon is, has, has shown some good arm strength. I mean, that's that's not an easy throw all the way out right. to the, to the sideline. Spread them out deep. Two receivers to the right side. Play clock's running down here as they're burning as much time as they can to try and give their defense a break. Dixon to throw again. This one knocked away by Melissa. Guess who? Intended. Melissa in the pass deflection of the Bulldog pass. Or I think that was 11. Brings up fourth Derek down. Trent, Trent again. again. And uh, really, Melissa played center field on that one. He waited, 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 and then made good connection as the ball was getting there. Honestly, could have gone for the pick if he wanted to, because he got time. He got, he got full perfect. full contact on that football. So another short possession for Doddridge County, and the Bulldogs will have to punt away again. Almost got in there again. Nice, nice high spiral. That's a beaut, and good now will let it bounce and kicks back out to the 24, but good now. Backpedaled on that one. Looked like it was going to take a, a big roll towards the end zone. But that best punt we've seen all night <laughs> by far. Good it's hang time. Huge, Clark. Yeah, a good beaut. hang time. And then when it uh, got the right bounce, too, when it when it hit the ground. So nicely done. On comes the Yellow Jacket offense. Let's see if the old number one works. <laughs> Snimied but once this evening. <laughs> On the, on the opening drive. Oh, yeah, on the opening drive at oh, the one. At the one yard line. <laughs> Melissa by himself now brings Joy in motion and will hand it to him. 25 30 and out to the 34 and, and near a first down. Tackles me by number nine of the Bulldogs, Sage Landon. Again, good, uh, good play there on first down. I think Joy is a very dependable back. I mean, they, uh, everybody uh, that's a skilled player on this Williamstown team is is, yeah. is perfect for their position. Oh, look at this little funky formation. Oh, look at that. We got linemen all over the place. Then a little uh, picket fence action, and Goodnow is open with blockers out there, and he'll have Let's the first pass down pass out of the 42. Out the a little trickeration from Coach line. Beck. I can just see First Coach Burnside right now, like, okay. <laughs> we get it. <laughs> What's the deal with that? And now Williamstown is going tempo. <laughs> We're doing it again. And they are going to do it again. Moving their lineman to the edge in front of a receiver. Now the receiver comes in motion, and they'll hand it to him going the other way. It's good now. And they're just pulling out all the tricks here as he's got another first down into dog territory at the 45. Away from the wall that was formed on the other side. And you know what? You know, I think this is really for the benefit of uh, Wheeling Central right now because now. now <laughs> Look at what we can do. And, and, and 
think Central's <laughs> coaches are like, oh, all right. Got to get ready for that. More <laughs> notes. <laughs> They're showing them pages 89 and 90 of the playbook right now. Would you say they have a plethora of plays? <laughs> I would indeed, sir. Oh, Melissa with the home run ball and overthrows good now by a couple of yards. It double covered, but he had the uh, had the space. Well, Dodgers County got down. some decent pushback there on the on the rush too, and they, you know, they were they caused Melissa to to hurry that throw a little bit. I'm sure he would have wanted to maybe uh, to get good now maybe another step out there. He had to hurry that throw because of the rush. So second and ten at the 45. Yellow Jackets in command of this game pretty much from the get-go. It'll be Joy wrapped up and brought down at the 41-yard line. On the stop, Samuel James, number 50 for Dodgers County. And a rare third down for Williamstown. I was going to say, it is a little bit of an unlikely thing uh, the, from what we've seen up to this point. Just, just you see this team play, you, you think these are really, really well-conditioned athletes. These guys are just super in shape. Uh, at Lincoln Much Joy. like us, Mike, hey, yeah, honestly. Well, <laughs> Lincoln Joy, he's not a very tall kid, but, he, again, you can get six, seven yards per carry. Melissa going off left tackle. Doddridge stringing him out, and they'll bring him down for no gain and cause the fourth down. Fantastic pursuit job there by Brandon Davis for the Bulldogs. It didn't start out that way. They had a no, really had a good, good push, push from the left yeah. side of the offensive line, but they closed quickly, and uh, yeah, credit Doddridge County right there for limiting that play right there because it looked like it was going to be a lot more than what it ended up being. It turned out to be a whole lot of hubaloo for just basically a no, a no gainer play. Three receivers to the left side on fourth and six. And Melissa to throw, flags are down. Melissa hit as he throws and it's picked at the 36 yard line. We'll see what the flag is as Sage Landis comes up with the football on fourth down. Coach Burnside has already said that he wants this one to climb. It looks like it's gonna be some sort of a push off, maybe offensive interference. I think I saw a legal shift because uh, Goodnow right. never came set after he was right. in motion, I believe. So motion maybe. Illegal motion. <laughs> I called it. Number five, that penalty will be declined. First down, Doddridge on the interception. And Doddridge, uh, as you know, on the pick, almost would have been ahead to knock it down. You better be able I was going to gonna say. <laughs> but, but your stat sheet looks better with an interception in it. <laughs> 654, second quarter, 31 nothing. Yellow Jackets, that is uh, only the second time they've had the football and not put it in the end zone. The 36 yard line, first down, 10. But that was a much better defensive stand. Uh, I mean, the first time they did yeah. not score. Yeah, it they really was. Yeah, they, they, they stopped it at the very last second, kept them out of the end zone on fourth down. That was a much better stand. That was a much better defensive blitzing there, defensive rush. Dixon to throw on first down into double coverage and That's picked right back. Gave it right back. Haynes with his second interception of the night. Pick number three. It's almost like he was the intended receiver. Six was the intended receiver. Landon Thomas and just overthrown third pick for the Williamstown defense. And Doddridge after that great defensive stand gives it right back. Gives them right back. So here's Melissa on first down after getting the ball back. He wants to throw, but Goodnow takes it on the wide receiver screen, makes the first man miss. Nice hop. Hero step, and he'll get out to the 49 and move the chains. Good, good play design there, too. It was a good kick out block by Jenner Burge. Uh, the, the right tackle came out and got the cornerback out of the way. 
Uh, wasn't a real on-target pass. Good now, though, once he got that block, he did the rest. I was going to say, nobody's go. gone up to cover. They'll go I formation here on first down, and it'll be Joy. Nice blocking. And all kinds of room for Lincoln. Oh, he lost the football. Loose ball, and did they get back on it? Still everywhere. Grass is wet. I think Doddridge has it. Doddridge County does have it. Bulldog football. And a turnover. Joy lost it on the way to the ground. That was that was a tremendous play for the first 75% of it because it was all offensive line blocking by Williamstown. Joy was untouched until he got to the secondary. All kinds of space. But then the secondary did a great job of being able to, to separate Joy from the ball. And a little bit of a scrum there at the end. Looks like Williamstown could have had a chance. Maybe one of those offensive linemen were able to get down there and, and, and have a shot for it. But Doddridge County ends up with it again. So sloppy play for both teams over these last couple of minutes. 6-12 here in the second quarter. 31-0 in favor of Williamstown. Doddridge trying to put something together here out of the eye. It'll be Heilman, oh my bounces goodness. off the oh. first wave, bounces off the second wave, and gets out to the 21. The Good for about two or three. Good now, and Hooper Back were there to make the stop, but what a great job by Heilman to escape from them and get just a couple of yards just to save his life a little bit. Pick up a little over three. Brings up second down in the long six for the Bulldogs. A long six. Some would call that seven. <laughs> <laughs> Matt does a great job for Williamstown <laughs> every year. I yeah, he does. Matt he is a, he's an institution here. Yeah. Dixon will stay under center and will go this time to his fullback. I believe that is Snyder on the bottom of the pile, and it is. And not much there for him. Oh, yeah. Third and seven. Running play by Kalen Snyder. No gain on the play. Again, it's 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 not a really a third down the long six. A crazy formula here. Every time they try to rush inside, Williamstown puts a stop to it. Uh, every time they try to get something to the edges, or maybe even a longer pass play, if they can get um, the quarterback the time that they need, looks pretty good. But that, those interior rushes, that's it's not keeping anybody honest. It's not doing any good for them right now. Oh! High snap on third and seven, and Dixon cannot corral it. And the Jackets will fall on it as Hooper makes another recovery. This one's not for a touchdown, but he will put them inside. Oh, they're going to move it back outside the 10. So first and 10 Yellow Jackets. I tell you, I mean, with every passing play, and it might have something to do with the breeze, it might have something to do. There you see Hooper jump on it there right at the end. It might have something to do with the breeze, and but the field conditions, it is definitely slick out there because that, that snap went over the quarterback's head. He could not position himself to get back out there. His feet went out from underneath him, uh, so he was not able to make the, the fumble recovery. Here's Melissa on first down and a free rusher coming at him. He fires to the end zone. Good now, is that good now or joy? That's good now. Good now. Does a pirouette in the end zone. And he's got the touchdown here on the one community replay. Look at that. Little Santonio Holmes for you. Oh. I know you like Steeler. Yeah, references. that's a wonderful <laughs> reference. Thank you. No, you did a great job. He, he positioned himself in the corner. Uh, Melissa got him a pass that was a little bit to the outside. He was able to make the catch as he was falling down. Still feet in the end zone. Uh, broke the plane. Oh, Touchdown, the Williamstown. 19, Jones. Jones for the extra point. And she puts it through. 429 left here in the second. And we're after 38 nothing. You're watching high school football presented by WV Medicine. Camden Clark here on CAS 45. At Cox Family Pharmacy, we've built our reputation by taking exceptional care of our patients. Our team takes the time to get to know you and your family so you can get the health and service that you deserve. Thank you for making us your pharmacy for over 17 years. Cox Family Pharmacy, we're trusted. Healthy relationships, it's how we think about primary care at Camden Clark. 
When you choose one of our providers, you're starting a relationship with access to award-winning specialty care, diagnostics, and MyWVU chart. Our state-of-the-art user-friendly electronic medical records that's at your fingertips. Caring for you for over 125 years, we're the only local community health care providers backed by the power of WVU Medicine. Healthy relationships start here. Louis Good now, a 10-yard touchdown catch, and they just announced that that makes him the all-time touchdown receptions leader in Williamstown history. School history, 16 touchdown catches. I've been a follower of Williamstown football for a long time, and I can't tell you that if they've ever really had a vaunted passing attack in the years that I've It's, all, it's always been, you know. Always yeah, had really good runners. Trying so. it. But this is a really good offense, and, and Good now has definitely found a niche. So he's had some pretty good quarterbacks to work with over the last couple of years, yeah. too. Heilman, on the Heilman will take it out to about the 33. The the Give Doddridge another possession here in the second quarter with 423 to go and trailing 38 to nothing. Well, I mean, again, they run up the middle, it gets stopped. If they can get a pass down the seam and see if they can get a little bit of space there, that would really, really be helpful to them. The problem is on incomplete passes and the stopping of the clock, a three and out can take about 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah. So they gotta make some connections here, just get something positive as they go into intermission. Oh, and he lost the snap. We've got a new quarterback. Long pitch out to Heilman, and he'll get a, about a yard out of it as Evan Cross, number 12, a freshman, is now in there at quarterback for Doddridge. That was just an amazing little bit of athleticism right there. Mishandled the snap, pick it up, and still continue the play in the right motion, too. It just that, That's a, I mean, that's a, a wonderful two-yard gain right there for, for Doddridge. So there you see... They got some youth on this team, on this Dodgers team. So, I mean, there you see Cross in there at quarterback in relief of Dixon, and he will up. Oh, he, he about triple clutched it and is going to be sacked at the 25. He started to throw about three different times and ends up on his back. It looks like he lost the handle of it, tried to get it back, clutched again, lost the handle of it. I've never seen that happen before. And he just ran See, out that's, of time. I, I didn't think he lost the handle on it. I thought it was like, go through it. Nope, that one's covered. <laughs> go through it. I think, oh, one time, covered. <laughs> I think at one time it actually popped okay. out of his hand, and that caused him to, to uh, double clutch. But that triple one, yeah, <laughs> ran out of time. That one. window shut. One pump too many. <laughs> this is not Starbucks. <laughs> Third and 15 after the sack. And it'll be a pitch back to Heilman, and he is caught back oh, there again. Sorry. Henry on the Gunner Henry. And that is Hunter Henry, and he comes up holding his shoulder. And that was friendly fire there. I mean, uh, uh, one of his um, one of his teammates came up and made a connect. I don't know if it was a, out of a high five kind of thing or whatever, but he might have jammed his shoulder on a little bit of a celebratory play right there. But he did a great job to just break through and, and just cause all sort of havoc with that play. The wind has picked up. It has indeed, as you, as you may, as you may be able to hear. Bulldogs to punt it away again. Another butte will drive Goodnell back to his oh, 40, and he lost it, and he will have to cover it up. Now, and Heilman comes flying in over the top, All trying the to make a get a shot at it, but it's going to be the 36-yard line. Is Goodnell and his rare miscues, as that one just kind of got away from him. But Williamstown keeps the football with 2.07 and three timeouts to work with. It's well, not like it takes two minutes for them to do much of anything no, no. as they've been moving down the field almost at will. I'd say good now just is probably trying to remember those early punts that were kind of knuckleballs. These last two have been spectacular, and, they, and they've been, you know, quick uh, off, off the foot of the punter there too. And uh, he's just not – these last two one, uh, punts he's just not adjusted well to. Melissa will hand it to Lincoln Joy. He will get the 40 and bring up second. <laughs> so 
Doddridge just trying to desperately hold on and get to the intermission without, you don't want somebody hanging a 40 burger on you in the no. first half. No. But Williamstown is definitely primed and ready to give them that possibility right now. <laughs> they're not, they're not holding back. No, they won't take their foot off the gas for a while. Here's Melissa off tackle. has got room midfield Back and to the 46. Tackled by Heilman. Move the chains again. Heilman Out in to make the stop. First down. And Heilman's going to earn his ice bath after this one. <laughs> that kid's been everywhere and he's been taking some punishment. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's what an embarrassment. Or not, it's not an embarrassment of riches. It's just a wonderful thing for, for Williamstown. They can this is what happens when you build a program. I tell you, you throw it to good now. You can let Lincoln Joy run it. Uh, and then uh, how, how about the best player possibly in, in class single A this year in Maxwell Molesta? And he will heave it to the end zone. Heilman back there playing center field. And somehow Joy, oh, I thought he had it and he, he dropped it. He, he did, and he and lost it before he hit the ground. See the replay. Watch. It looked like Heilman had it. Joy jumps in there at the last second and can't complete it this oh my could not pull it in Whew. fantastic uh camera work there by our guys that up was here. a great shot 53 seconds left second and 10 melissa i mean if you want to give him any critical if that was as far as he could throw it i mean it's not like he's got a cannon back there i eat it's an he's, extremely serviceable arm by by all measures, but he was thrown into the wind and it was a little bit of a wobbler, so it didn't get that you know crisp spiral through the air. But yeah, it was still. Lincoln Joy on the carry. He'll go right back to Joy and he'll get a couple of yards on the ground. Timeout. And timeout, Williamstown, with 44 seconds left, and it'll be third down. You don't want to get too nuts here. You're up, you're up by 38 points. <laughs> uh, but like I said, you don't take your foot off the gas until no. till the starters come out. It's their job to stop you, <laughs> and they're not doing that right now. So, uh, yeah. You, that's, that's, you that's, what, uh, that's what Steve Spurrier always said when Florida yeah, was running up the score. He's like, they're just running the offense. I can put freshmen in there, but they will run the offense we have. We do not have a sit-on-the-ball offense. Coach Beck has objectives. He wants to win the LKC, and he wants to go back-to-back. -back. That is what this team is wanting to do. You know what? 38 nothing. 44 seconds left in the first half. No, we're going to score. That's what we do, and I don't blame him for it. It's Doddridge County's job to stop it. Uh, coming up at the half, it looks like we're going to get shows from both Doddridge County and Williamstown. So uh, look forward to seeing uh, both of those marching bands. It's, it's good to see Doddridge bringing their marching band down here. A big uh, marching band competition tomorrow down in Huntington at Marshall University's. At the Joan. At the Joan. <laughs> the Tri-State Marching Band Melissa to throw on third and long, and he will complete that one, and they will get the first down as Gavin Lemley hauls it in. And he's inside the 30. Clock will stop to move the chains and then start again. Williamstown does have two timeouts left. Gavin Lemley, is uh, he's a basketball player playing football this year. Uh, he, they, they, ha they asked him to come out for the team, and he has been a great addition. Joy will run his way down to the 22, and Williamstown will burn another timeout at 26 seconds. Uh, you know, and again, and these are this the, these are things that you just have to continually work on. I know Williamstown is a high-powered offense; they can score quick. But you know what? There is, there are times when you're going to have to execute a, a two-minute drill-style offense. Uh, so that's what they're working on right now. You know, there's 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 plenty of stuff to work on. Uh, you know, there, I know we got a big matchup. They got a big matchup with um, uh, Wheeling Central next week, and then you don't know who you're going to see. You know you're going to be there. You just don't know who you're going to meet up with in the playoffs. These are all things you have to work on. You, you know, um, uh, the, the name of the game is scoring, scoring points, scoring touchdowns. Sometimes that can be through an 80-yard uh, bomb, or that can be through a two-minute drill. That's what Coach Beck's working on right now. Williamstown, you know, uh, as far as the LKC goes, you could see Doddridge again. It's a possibility. Uh, you could see St. Mary's again, who you beat by four. Yeah, that, that oh, and. <laughs> you, 
you could see Wahama, who you haven't seen this you year. You haven't seen yet, but that, but you've been hearing a lot <laughs> about what they can do. they've been taking people apart down yeah. at Mason. That's, that's a good team, too. Second and three, and it's Melissa to throw to the end zone and knocked away. What a great Good now was right there, but is that Heilman again? Melissa's pass for Good now. Watch this number replay. Nine. Number nine. Oh, number nine. Sage Landis just put a hand out there at the last minute. Full extension. Oof. What a great nice. job. Nice. Landis saves the touchdown. Third and three with 21 seconds left. Melissa to throw again. This one is complete. Stop and out of bounds is Rex is Anderson. Another first down for the Jackets with 14 seconds left. The nine yard line. Not, first just first goal. Goal. Not just your normal fullback. He's got a good <laughs> set of hands on him, too. The funny thing is, you go down there and you stand next to these kids from Williamstown, they don't impress you with their height. Six foot. They're not huge. No, yeah. I, I, they're, they've probably got like three kids on the team over 200 pounds. But, man, are they just athletic. So, a textbook two-minute drill here for the Yellow Jackets. 14 seconds left, first and goal at the nine. Melissa to run it himself, and he will take it in for the touchdown. For the touchdown and Maxwell right. Melissa has accounted for five touchdowns in this opening half. And look at him. He's just like, I, I just want to get in. I want to get in. And, it, and it's still... He had to do in a full extension to get across the plane to get that touchdown. But it was a good job. Uh, got to the one-yard line. Dodgers looked like they had him almost hung up there for a little bit. But uh, Melissa, fine in the end zone. Jones for the extra point. Got it. Got drilled in the process. But it is good. And it is 45 to nothing. And again, the field is... It's showing itself right now. It is a, it's a, it's a, as you said, slippy. Is that what you it's said? It's slippy. But a great so job by Jones in falling three down, three still three able to push it through. She's three for three with her extra point attempts. They haven't been pretty, but they've been effective. Maxwell Melissa, a four-yard touchdown run, a 16-yard touchdown run, and a nine-yard touchdown run to go with his 10-yard touchdown pass and 49-yard touchdown pass. Five scores for Maxwell Melissa. Then throw in a block punt recovered in the end zone. Somebody wants to be player of the game, I think. We used to hand that out. <laughs> <laughs> like it was the key to the city. <laughs> and no one ever really knew that they had it. Great. It was more, like the, more, more like the key to a Buick Riviera or something. <laughs> key to the city. Nine seconds left. This kick will be taken at the 25. 30 35. And that is going to about turn. do it Hold for on. one of the nine. up men. That is Landis. Perfect and the dogs are. One last play. The Haven. On the tackle is Jenner Bird for the Yellow Jackets. And coming out to play quarterback is going to be number 12 again. This is Evan Cross. He's a freshman in relief of Bryson Dixon, the sophomore, who threw three picks in the first half and just kind of had a miserable day out there. Showed, showed, some, <laughs> showed some, some flashes that there's some talent there, some good throws. This, this team is six and two for a reason. Yeah. I mean, they've got some good um, uh, athleticism coming from those positions. Uh, and we've seen we've seen a really nice touch with the passing as well. It's just not working out for him so far. Snyder will run out the first half, and it has been a show by the Williamstown Yellow Jackets. 45 to nothing over the Doddridge County Bulldogs. We'll take a timeout. See if we can watch some marching bands here at the half. You're watching high school football presented football by uh, WVU Medicine Camden Clark on CAS 45. Healthy relationships. It's how we think about primary care at Camden Clark. When you choose one of our providers, you're starting a relationship with access to award-winning specialty care, diagnostics, and my WVU chart. Our state-of-the-art user-friendly electronic medical records that's at your fingertips. Caring for you for over 125 years. 
We're the only local community health care providers backed by the power of WVU Medicine. Healthy relationships start here. Rejuvenation Laser and Skin Center wants to welcome three new state-of-the-art machines to their location. The Physique targets stubborn areas that regular diet and exercise have trouble with to help you get the results you've been looking for. The Tetra is a CO2 laser that offers fully customizable skin treatments to help improve fine lines and wrinkles, scars, and more. The Pico helps remove tattoos and dark spots by offering laser skin resurfacing with no downtime. Call 740-538-9943 to book your appointment.
And now for your high time entertainment, the Pride of Williamson and the Williamson High School marching band.
Once again, the Pride of Williamstown, the Williamstown High School marching band. Thank you to our friends at CAS Cable for being our sponsors for Belfry Homecoming. Thank you, CAS Cable, for supporting the Parkersburg South marching band. weather's here, so it's time to call Morrison Incorporated today and schedule your fall furnace check and tune-up. Still, for just $90, we'll test, clean, and adjust your home's heating system so it's safe and ready to keep you warm this winter. We're not looking for problems, we're looking to prevent them. Call 373-5869 or book your appointment online at morrisonhvac.com. Morrison Incorporated, always ready. With Bryant, whatever it takes. Restrictions apply. 
It's game time, and One Community Federal Credit Union is here to help you tackle your financial goals. With our convenient and secure electronic banking and mobile services, we're taking our customer service experience to the next level. Plus, our CD rates are some of the best around, so you get more bang for your buck. When you need a loan, One Community can get you a great rate and a fast decision made locally. It all adds up to us being the Mid-Ohio Valley's winning team. One Community Federal Credit Union, online at onecommunityfcu.org. season so i'm getting my costume ready but you don't have to be afraid of slow internet speeds or high prices with internet from cas cable right now new customers can buy one month of internet service from cas cable and get a second month free this is one deal you can count on ah, ah. Here in Williamstown, getting ready for the second half, 45 nothing. Williamstown dominating this game. Brian Guthrie, Mike Cameron, happy to have you tuned in. And uh, Mike, you got some stats from the first half? I do, sir. Williamstown leading the charge in obviously pretty much every category. 14 first downs. Uh, they've rushed the ball 22 times for 151 yards. They've had seven receptions for 129 yards. Um, let's see here, uh, Dodgers County, two first downs. They've had 16 rushes for two yards. They have completed four passes for 66 yards. So that, that one, there was most of that came on one. One play. Uh, four of 10 passing. Uh, they've been intercepted three times. Individually speaking, Maxwell Melissa uh, has rushed the ball nine times for 84 nine yards. Nine times. Yep, and he's scored uh, three touchdowns. Good now has two rushes for 31 yards. Lincoln Joy nine rushes for 30 yards. Melissa is eight of 11 passing for 132, two touchdowns and an interception. Doddridge quarterback Brian, uh, Bryson Dixon is four of 12 before he was uh, benched. Uh, 30, 66 yards passing, but he was intercepted three times. And again, the rushing the ball. Talon Snyder has been the most effective, two rushes for five yards. Uh, Brandon Heilman, 11 rushes for four yards. 11 rushes for four yards. That and tells you how many times he's been caught behind the line of scrimmage. And, and Evan Cross got one. He was the guy that came in to uh, relieve um, Dixon at quarterback, and he was he rushed one time for negative seven. So that's where the, the negative yardage came in at. Yeah, but yes, so it's been a complete and total domination uh, from get go, and, and and you know, Doddridge was was really game, you know, at the beginning. It, oh yeah, they they they, uh, they threw the early interception, but then made the goal line stand, and we thought, all right, so they're here to play, and then this, the wheels came off from that point forward. Uh, the the goal line stand was about the best thing that happened. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's been. Um, I mean, we we've used the term bend but don't break. They've done that a couple of times too. But yeah, I mean, really, what was it? Maybe three possessions that Williamstown did not score on in that first half. Uh, I mean, it has been. I mean, there had been moments, visions of grandeur there for for Doddridge County, but they've, uh, yeah, just ran into a Williamstown bus all. You may have noticed the. You can hear the breeze has picked up here uh, high atop the press box here in Williamstown. I'm not going to lie to you, too. I'm, I'm chilly. This is cold. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, it stayed in the mid-60s, I think. So uh, it's, it's a lot of people, fairly comfortable here. Yeah, it a lot is, of people uh, in shirt sleeves and shorts still out there, but then you do see a smattering of uh, hoodies as well. It is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Night, a pink out here in Williamstown. Uh, WV Medicine Camden Clark handing out pink cowbells and all kinds of uh, uh, breast cancer awareness literature here tonight. The kick from Doddridge will be taken at the 15. There's 20, 25. Doddrill. And Doddrill on the return for the Yellow Jack. They're gonna stand him up at about the 29. Now that was Landon Doddrill.
So we're in the third. Unless the back out there. So we'll see how long the Williamstown starters stay in. With Melissa staying in there at quarterback. And it'll be good now on the sprinting sweep. And he will get about eight before he is stood up. So good now on the carry for the Yellow Jackets. So, you know, an, in, an interesting also thing here is at 45 nothing the they have not shortened the quarters, and we do not have a running clock. Okay. So I, I believe the fourth quarter automatically happens. It can happen in the third if the coaches agree. Oh, okay. I was not sure uh, if that, that was. That's a, my understanding I didn't of, know that. of I the I thought policy. it was uniform as soon as it hit the, a certain point differential. But Here's Lincoln Joy on second and short, and he is loose and into Doddridge territory down to about the 43. And his good night continues. Joy has a 49-yard touchdown reception and three two-point conversions. <laughs> yes, he has definitely put made his mark on this game. Again, all these all these Williamstown skill position guys that are they're just top notch at what they do, and they have performed well tonight. 45 nothing right now, and, and getting the ball first, and that's just got to be insult to injury right there. <laughs> Here's Melissa on first and 10. He'll go to Joy. Joy left side. Joy across the 30, inside the 20, and down to the 20 or the 17 yard line, and another big chunky yardage for Lincoln Joy. Again, this is not the uh, last home game for Williamstown. They will meet the Wheeling Central Catholic Maroon Knights here next Friday night. If there's a team that Williamstown truly despises more than maybe <laughs> anybody that's in the LKC more than St. Mary's more than St. Mary's <laughs> I think it's the, I think it's those Maroon Knights from Wheeling Central they uh, all, yeah they met in a lot of championship games yeah games. and some not so legendary <laughs> <laughs> here's Anderson up the middle for about five Doddridge County will stay on the road to finish the season they'll be in Middleburn to take on Consiler Tyler Consolidated next week that should be a, that'll be a good game too. I mean, I, I know Tyler Consolidated. I, I said on my radio show earlier today that they got a little bit of an education last week when they came here. Um, same one Dodgers is getting today. The same one. <laughs> they are throwing these lessons around for free. Here's Joy. Oh my goodness! Spinning his way and winning into the end zone for another Williamstown touchdown from 12 yards out. I think he said, Coach, I'm sorry I fumbled that one in the, late in the first half. Can I have another shot? And he responded well on this drive with three very large runs. And we've got another kicker. This will be Bosgraf. This is the kid that's been doing the uh, kickoffs. Up and through. Bosgrass with the extra point up and good. And at 9.37 of the third quarter, it is now 52 0 Williamstown. You're watching high school football presented by WVU Medicine Camden Clark here on CAS 45. Healthy relationships. It's how we think about primary care at Camden Clark. When you choose one of our providers, you're starting a relationship with access to award-winning specialty care, diagnostics, and MyWVU chart. Our state-of-the-art user-friendly electronic medical records that's at your fingertips. Caring for you for over 125 years. We're the only local community health care providers backed by the power of WVU Medicine. Healthy relationships start here. Friday night, make sure you join us. We will be live in uh, Southside as the Patriots of Parkersburg South host the Princeton Tigers, put the caps on uh, their regular seasons. Both those teams likely headed for the AAA playoffs. So ought to be a good one next week right here on CAS 45. So after the touchdown, Williamstown to kick off yet again. And that one goes right at Heilman. 
He'll take this one at 17. There's 25 and trying to find some room out across the 30 before he is twisted down. And we've got we've got the starting offense or starting defense coming back out. It looks like maybe some substitutions here and there. But uh, good now still out there. Corbett's still out there. Joy's still out there. I think that's is it Melissa right there? Yep, Melissa's out that's there. That's the starters. Haynes is out there. And He's had a couple interceptions tonight. Dixon is back in at quarterback for Doddridge County. They're going back to the sophomore. And on the jet sweep, it'll be a loss of about three or four as they tried to get it to Trent, and he just could not find the corner. Again, just it, you gotta you gotta credit Sites there, William Sites. He broke through. Made the, you know, basically he didn't make the tackle on there, but he made the jet sweep stop for a second. They had to go around him, and by that time, Melissa was completely now caught up and completely involved in the play. But that starts on the left end from Williamstown, busting through and, and, and just, just messing that play up. Second and 14. Dixon play action, rolls out, throws on the roll, run. Got it loose, had a couple of receivers there. Neither one of them can corral it, and it'll be third down. Dixon took a shot at the end of that one, too, on the rollout. He had his, it was a lot of congestion there, but the receiver was open. He just did not make the connection. 66 Jet Nestor applying the pressure. And again, that's that was a, he got some mustard on it for yeah. being on the run like that and, and having to sling it, but uh, so there's, there's flashes of talent there. This kid, this kid still got two years left. He's he's gonna yes. be good. Yeah, he will be a factor, especially in his junior and senior years as well. Dixon deep drop on third down, fires down the far oh, sideline and nice drops catch. it right in the bucket. Beautiful catch into double coverage, and yet that ball had the only person who could make the play on that one was the receiver. Look at over both defenders and. Put the biscuit in the basket. First down, Bulldogs. Haynes went for the ball, and he just did not have enough height to make that. It was a kind of a looping play, a looping pass, so he could not make the stop. 24 was there, Anderson, but he was behind the play. Boy, he just, oh, my, just put it right in the bread basket. So the first first down for Doddridge in, in quite a while. <laughs> And it'll be a handoff to the fullback. That's Snyder. And he'll grind a couple of yards out of it. Run by so a real quick play. Perryman. Got it to the fullback. That was not play. Snyder. Who did they say that was? That <laughs> was Berryman, Trace Berryman. Went to the inside. Oh, 21. I thought it was 24. Okay. <laughs> And 21 stays in there as the fullback. Second and eight. And Dixon to throw again. They'll go to the far sideline again. And he almost completes it. And he almost popped it up Trent, in the air. Yeah, Trent had a shot at that one. And just about kicked it up in the air. A little bit more of that traditional offense, though, going under center, quick drop back, uh, immediate recognition of what target he wanted to hit, and he almost, again, it was a good pass, just didn't make the connection. St. Mary's winning, did he say? Yeah, 26-6 over Tyler. Look out for them Blue Devils, buddy. <laughs> that were purple. That were purple. Shut up. Don't look. We've had this conversation. <laughs> Almost DeHaven had it uh, bounce off his pads. Knocked away by Landis. I don't know if Landis knocked it away or, or DeHaven just didn't get his uh, clamps all the way around that ball. As I said, I think he got it into his pads. And it'll be fourth down. 
Well, and again, I think he was hearing um, the footsteps of one Maxwell Melissa right behind him as well. And uh, after he did not make the initial catch, uh, he got drilled pretty good. Could not could not adjust to to make that catch. Brandon Davis to punt it away. Again, his hip's going to be sore after this one. <laughs> got off a bit of a wobbler, and that one's going to roll to the 15 and stop. Ball marked down at the 15 yard line. First down and 10 for the All Jackets. 7.09 left here in the third. 52 nothing Doddridge, or 52 nothing Williamstown. They're on the Preston's Beauty Academy scoreboard. Brian Guthrie, Mike Cameron, happy to have you here for game four of our five game high school football slate for this season. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to be with you at South next weekend. It's fine. Your Marriott of College duties draw you away. Yes. <laughs> things to do, things to do. Joy will take the snap, and he will hand it off, as I believe we have now gone to the second string. I'll pass the 20. As that is going to be Cooper 25. Billingsley. Five. Seven on the play. Cooper Billingsley, 5'6", 153. And I think that's with a couple of rocks in his pocket. But he is a very athletic kid. He gets some good yardage whenever he gets a shot. So the second string offense will be run by Lincoln Joy under center. Billingsley, the deep back. Anderson, the fullback. And it'll be Anderson. Oh, and he, he spins, got away. Spins out of the and tackle, he's and he's going. still going. Midfield. Anderson in a foot race will be drugged down from behind. Should have been dropped at the line of scrimmage. Sage Landis has to track him down. And Rex Anderson gets about three quarters of the way down the field. As you watch the One Community Federal Credit Union replay, watch him get right there. Play should be over. Play should be over. Got away. Did not wrap. I didn't hear no whistle. And it was off to the races. I think he just ran out of steam after yeah. a while. But <laughs> fullbacks are not supposed to run that no, far. No, they're not supposed to go that far. So we Here's Billingsley. Billingsley on the carry for the Yellow Jackets inside the 15. Again, I am just I'm blown away. I, I see it a lot, but I still am. I, it's just a beautiful thing to watch. This offensive line of, of about five kids that are averaging 190 pounds, and they're blowing holes open. It's about all about I Will. Mean, <laughs> I mean, let me tell you something. And, and, and pure strength. I mean, these guys are these guys are good, they're taught well, and, and they work out well. Um, they it just it's amazing to me. They got the new workout facility here, the weight room. Updates here at Williamstown Joy is Joy makes the run. Down almost the 10 yard line. And his lead blocker actually slipped a little bit, but Joy said, ball. That's all right, I'll just do it myself. He got a, the yardage that he needs. There, there was a third down and three. injury, but he's seemingly has gotten up on Doddridge County. That was number 34. Senior Caden Huffman, slow to get up, but he'll return to the defensive huddle. Third and three for Williamstown as we go inside, five to go here in the third. Split out too wide to the left. Anderson alongside Joy. Joy will throw. And complete and down inside the five is Haynes, who has two interceptions today. And again, that play goes nowhere without the great kickout block by Jenner Burge from his right tackle position. Ran out there athletically. Got that cornerback off the ball, and uh, that if he does not make that block, that, that play got would would have got knocked back for at least maybe a three to four yard loss. First and goal at the four. Anderson the fullback. Billingsley the deep man. It'll be Billingsley. Nothing there. So we close in on four minutes to go here in the third quarter. No gain on the play. Run by Cooper Billingsley. As I mentioned before, outside of the St. Mary's game, which was 12-8 in St. Mary's, and the 22-19 thriller we saw here against uh, Marietta, no one has played Williamstown within 35 points. 
They put 62 on Ravenswood, 60 on Webster, 56 on Wirt, 67 on Ritchie, 62 on Calhoun, and 51 on Tyler. I still, at, the, at, the, the at that moment line. in time, I, the 51 on Tyler was the one that shocked me the most. Tyler County was 7-1 and one and, uh -huh. like, in top 10, I believe, in single A. But they had the... <laughs> They had the, the fun little move of going to Williamstown and St. Mary's in consecutive weeks. That's the, <laughs> Nobody likes Congratulations. that. Congratulations. <laughs> you, you win the worst prize ever. <laughs> Third and goal from the three. <laughs> Here's Billingsley waiting for his blocks to set up, and he's going to be swallowed up from Billingsley the backside. Caleb James comes shooting around the corner to make the tackle, and it'll be fourth and goal. So according to the SSAC rankings, which, again, it's a computer or whatever right. that takes into account your, you know, who you played and bonus points and all that other kind of stuff, Tucker County at 8-0 was the number one team. Greenbrier West, 8-0, number two. James Monroe, 6-1, number three. Williamstown, number four. Tug Valley, five. Wahama 6, Cameron 7, St. Mary's 8, Mann 9, and Doddridge County 10. As they'll attempt a field goal on fourth and goal. I think he got it through, yep. And 21-yard field goal at 2.14 left in the third. But, uh, you know, people say, well, Williams, how's Williamstown not number one? They should be voted number one. There's not votes. It's not votes. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's points. It's, it yeah, really it's is. points. Because like I said, you know, uh, James and Monroe at six and one, you know, they have a loss, but they've beaten a couple double A teams, right. which is worth more points, and that's how you move up. Again, it doesn't matter. Williamstown's going to the playoffs as the prohibitive favorite, in my opinion. Um, uh, you know, taking nothing away from Tucker County or – you know, or, or James Monroe or any of those teams. This is a really good football team. Yeah, they, again, I think Coach Beck would say, yeah, I mean, I think we need to be a little bit higher than where we are right now. But I think, you know, he knows what this team can do. They're going to be in the – they're going to be at least a home game, at least. So it's just, you know, get in, find out who your opponent is, and just start – Taking care of business. I mean, I, I, I think he's fully confident that he can, his 11 can go up against anybody else's 11 yeah. just fine. Uh, that Tucker County team, that's, that is an interesting team. They uh, beat a very tough Eastern Eagle team out of Ohio a couple weeks ago. Eastern is uh, – How in the world did Eastern and Tucker County wind they, up on a they, schedule they, together? They certainly <laughs> did. And it, I think Tucker went to them. Oh, my. So – that's out in the mountains. Yeah, so it was uh, – It was. Uh, yeah, those Eastern Eagles are good. It's a good team. Jason uh, Jackson has got a squad. He's built – He's he has fixed that program. And uh, so, I mean, so Tucker County, I think, is completely, totally legit. So, I mean, it, just got to get them on the field and see what they can do. But, I, again, I think it, it just goes back to Coach Beck. I think he would be fully confident with his 11 playing against anybody else's 11 right now. They're going to be just fine. Uh, the Bulldogs will switch back to Evan Cross at quarterback, and we've got a Bulldog down on the field, and he's going to be attended to by the trainers. We will step aside with the injury timeout. 158 to go in the third, 55 nothing. Yellow Jackets. You're watching High School Football, presented by WVU Medicine, Camden Clark on CAS 45. Rejuvenation Laser and Skin Center wants to welcome three new state-of-the-art machines to their location. The Physique targets stubborn areas that regular diet and exercise have trouble with to help you get the results you've been looking for. The Tetra is a CO2 laser that offers fully customizable skin treatments to help improve fine lines and wrinkles, scars, and more. The Pico helps remove tattoos and dark spots by offering laser skin resurfacing with no downtime. Call 740-538-9943 to book your appointment. Thank you to our friends at CAS Cable for being our sponsors for Belfry Homecoming. Thank you, CAS Cable, for supporting the Parkersburg South Marching Band. Thank you, CAS Cable, for supporting Discovery World! <laughs> Number 
Number four, Brandon Davis, back on his feet and walking off the field. Looked like he's just cramping up. You know, it's 70 degrees, 75 during the day, and it's, you know, lower 60s, upper 50s here at night. By the way, it's the end of October, and it was mid-70s today. Guess what's coming up on uh, the 31st? More coughing and sneezing? I don't know what. It's going to be a highs of 50 and lows of 27. So if you if happy you, Halloween, if you send your kids trick or treating, you might want to put a, a, a flannel on underneath Jeez. that. Uh, <laughs> that I've already costume. scraped. I have scraped my windows this week. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're wearing shorts. And now I'm in shorts. <laughs> to throw on second oh, down and incomplete. <laughs> that one a little low for his intended receiver. On uh, me third and six for Doddridge County. Inside of two minutes to go here in the third quarter. And Doddridge has had, as we, you know, trying to stay po as positive as we can. They've, they've had some good plays. They've done some good things. They've done a lot of bad things. Stuff that you could probably get away with against a team that isn't Williamstown. Right. But Williamstown is, will offer no favor. Right. And, and again, they're a six and two football team. They are good. They have athletes, but it just shows the divide. Oh, trying that go route up the sideline again that has worked a couple of times intended for Trent. They cannot make the connection, and it'll be another punting situation for Doddridge County. And the punter for the team is was the one that was injured on that last play, so we'll have to see if he's okay enough to come. Oh in. yeah. Yep, it looks like he's trying to work out that cramp a little bit. <laughs> Good bun again. Fair catch hey, called for. And that's where Williamstown will start. <laughs> and I don't know if our camera guys can can see this or not, but uh, the cheerleaders are whipping little pink footballs into the crowd, and and uh, they're uh, I don't I don't believe there's over. a lot of softball players <laughs> on the team down there. <laughs> Get some headshots. <laughs> Keep your head on a swivel with those. Yeah, <laughs> be ready. We've got a new quarterback in. Jackson I believe that is still Billingsley the running the ball. Run. Yep. And now Jackson Kerr is in to take the snaps Seven on the play. for Williamstown. Down three. See their number eight running into the huddle. There he is. Wait for it. There you <laughs> And and um, <laughs> the, you know, again, outside of a couple of games, these guys have seen a lot of game time uh, this year. Yeah, that is the thing that has been a, a probably the more um, one of the big things for Coach Beck, especially the is that. Yeah, he gets that second unit. Sometimes he gets that third unit in there, the and they're getting line. a lot of good playing time. Okay. So that just builds a program. I mean, you get useful time on the field, that just builds a program. Next year, we're going to be they're going to be without Maxwell Melissa. Well, there's going to have to be somebody that rises up. Well, we've had yeah, uh, we've yeah. seen Jackson a couple. Kerr is just you know just made made a first down run there. He's he's you know he knows the plays. And I believe it'll probably, yeah, Lincoln Joy is a is a junior, so he'll probably assume that quarterback position next year. Billingsley nice. will so run Billy for Billy another Billy. first down for Williamstown. Got some laundry on the field, though. So about the 49-yard line. Might be a crack back block. It's only the some second sort. flag we've seen yeah. tonight. Yeah, we have really have not seen much involvement from the Super clean game. Yep. Uh, the one motion that I called. <laughs> you were all <laughs> over that one. <laughs> So put that in the three mistakes Williamstown <laughs> has made tonight. He's always that wide receiver. 
trying to seal that edge. <laughs> <laughs> Billingsley's like, thanks, man. Yeah. First down 15 for the All Jackets. That's right. I didn't want those 10 yards. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. That's fine. <laughs> Kerr out of the shotgun on first and 15 after the penalty. He's going to keep it himself, trying to find some room, and he will slip down just past the 35. I believe it's still slippy out. <laughs> and that's going to do it for the third quarter. Throw in another 10 points for Williamstown, and we're at 55 nothing. Back for the fourth after this. You're watching High School Football presented by WV Medicine Camden Clark on CAS 45. At Cox Family Pharmacy, we've built our reputation by taking exceptional care of our patients. Our team takes the time to get to know you and your family so you can get the health and service that you deserve. Thank you for making us your pharmacy for over 17 years. Cox Family Pharmacy, we're trusted. Healthy relationships, it's how we think about primary care at Camden Clark. When you choose one of our providers, you're starting a relationship with access to award-winning specialty care, diagnostics, and MyWVU chart. Our state-of-the-art user-friendly electronic medical records that's at your fingertips. Caring for you for over 125 years. We're the only local community health care providers backed by the power of WVU Medicine. Healthy relationships start here. Mike and Ryan back here in Williamstown, 55 nothing. Williamstown has done just about everything right today against the Doddridge County Bulldogs. Williamstown will likely wrap up an LKC championship. Wahama will also probably be undefeated in LKC, but I believe tiebreakers here and there or whatever else are common opponents. I don't know how they do it in football. It seems like a free-for-all in football. Uh, and then basketball makes no sense either because there's <laughs> pods. There's east and west and some pods. Here's Billingsley on second down, and he'll get out across the 40. Up to almost the 43 yard line, gain of seven. Did they make an announcement about how they're going to handle this quarter? I did not hear. Uh, they have made no announcement about a running clock, but I believe fourth quarter in a 35 point or more game, it should be a running clock. Just after nine o'clock on the East Coast. Kerr hands to Billingsley. Billingsley's got the 45, and that'll be about it. It'll be fourth and five. We'll see if Coach Beck wants to bring out the punt team or. They want to preserve the shutout, play the field position game, and they will. Out will come the punt team. On the punt for the Yellow Jackets, number five, really good now. First punt for Williamstown tonight. I was going to say, I don't think I've seen that play run tonight. <laughs> for Williamstown, we've seen uh, Dodgers. Plenty of punts times. for Dodgers, yep. Good now, gets a high spiral up in the air, takes a big old Williamstown bounce at the 30, and will stop just inside the 20. Following mark down at the 20 yard line, first down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Five nothing. Yep. <laughs> so uh, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much. You going to? You meeting the wife at Applebee's later? Uh, you know what? I need to. I need to check on that possibility. Fiesta lime chicken, my go-to at Applebee's. <laughs> just, just or the half-price apps. Those you can never really oh, lose on those either. Oh, we just gave them a commercial, I believe. Mm. Is it still eating good in the neighborhood? I was going to go with fancy like, but <laughs> oh, okay. if you'd like, I can. I know how I that's. Know. I am not. I know how that song goes. I'm not privy to the inner workings of that song. Oh, he broke away. Brandon and a nice run there Brandon. by number four, Brandon Davis. He's been busy punting yeah, and getting a chance to 
run the football tonight and gets a nice gain for Doddridge. It looked like they had him stay. It looked like they had him stood up, but he did not give up on the play, and there was no whistle. He broke away and got a couple extra yards after that. Nicely done. I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> <laughs> Dixon back in at quarterback. Under center, and we'll hand off. And was that 21? Berryman again? Yep, yep. Berryman. He'll get about a yard. He's Sutton on the tackle for the Yellow Jackets. <laughs> Section is along with Ty Ott. Number 16 on the field there for the Yellow Jackets, Christian Hoosier, the younger brother. <laughs> Dixon oh. completes a pass and loose down the far side of the field is Aiden James. And he will be brought down around the Williamstown 30. James I cannot remember the first name of that boy now that played the, all those great years for Williamstown Williams Hoosier. Trevor. Trevor Hoosier. At the 29 yard line. First down 10 for the Bulldogs. So we'll see if the defense stiffens up here in protecting that shutout. That would be very important to the boys in maroon and gold right now. They want to. As you said, this is this has been statements and this has been messages sent to the other teams that left on you know the well the other team on the schedule and and playoff opponents of this is a top ten team that we just dismantled. Just FYI, watch the tape. Two straight. I mean, yeah. Tyler Consolidated came in in a much heralded game. I know the the uh, the gentleman over at. Uh, Metro News called out their game of the week last week. so uh, And it was not. It was not. <laughs> it was a dismantling. And this one here, I think, had a little bit more of a uh, herald to it as well. But, uh, yeah, it's been all Williamstown for two consecutive weeks now against two really good LKC opponents. Barryman will try right up the middle, and he'll get a yard or two. I'll bring up third and long for Doddridge. It's, it's kind of interesting. Brings up third down and eight. In that, and basically in all three classes, but but I, you know, just because we're talking about single A, there's two or three teams that are legit contenders, and everybody else is good, and it may be the best season that school has ever had, you know. But you see in the playoffs as Dixon wings it towards the end zone and almost picked, knocked away, incomplete. It'll be fourth down. But, you know, if you see a team like, uh, I, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to just kind of make a team up or something like that. But like, uh, you know, Summers County is six and three, having and one of the best seasons they've the had in a long time and just running through people. And they're going to go to the playoffs and Summers County is going to run into Williamstown and get taken apart. And, it, and it, there's, no, <laughs> you know, it's like, this is the best team we've ever put on the field. Well, you know, there's a difference between good and great. Yeah, there's there are definite levels within, especially in the class single A. No, another great, just kind of got a pop yep. there and knocked it down. But yeah, you're right. I mean, that's that's what I'm. That, I, I made that point earlier. It's like you've got, you know, Tyler Consolidated, Doddridge County, and, and good programs, and normally. Normally good programs. Having good seasons. Good seasons. But then they, you know, we're, we're seeing the distinction right now between the two um, with the way the, these last couple games especially have went. I, I, I remember Williamstown two years ago went to Summers Y'all County, and they, they, had a, they had a fight on their hands. They, yeah. they, ended yeah, up, yeah. they ended up surviving that but, game. But, yeah, that was. But it's, uh, you know, and, and I, you know, in AAA, it was Martinsburg and everybody else for the right. longest time. It was, you know, I don't care how good Wheeling Park thinks they are. You know, they'll, we're 10-0, and 0, we're 12-0, and 0, and then you get lose by 60 to, to Martinsburg, and it's like, how, well, how good were you actually? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Yeah. I just, I mean, even on the island, just there were so many blowouts. Yeah. Uh, you know, we used to go up and, and broadcast Super play. 6, and, well, we had a couple of good just games. Right. <laughs> a lot of them were just blowouts. 
So I, you know, Williamstown has to go in that that upper echelon, that right. top tier of. I'm 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 going to be very interested to see this how it's seated, and uh, and just see what happens when it gets you know when when the teams get out there. Um, I have a feeling there's going to be a really good couple. You know, the quarterfinal game. All the way to the semifinal, I think. Yeah, there's. It's, it, that's when it's really going to start to get really interesting at that point. But, um, yeah, I can't wait to see what a potential like Tucker County Williamstown matchup or a James Monroe uh, Williamstown matchup. St. Mary's needs to be in that um, conversation as well too. So there's. It's going to be an, a, a really great field uh, of 16 once the, the playoffs get around. Third and 13. Kerr's going to try and run it himself. He'll stop and go, and he will be slung out of bounds at about the 23-yard line, and a flag is down as the Williamstown band is playing Soulfinger. <laughs> just, FYI, just so you know, that's Soulfinger. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Fly side block, number 16 in the offense. Penalties decline, fourth down. So they'll keep the clock running at 335 left in this ball game. And another fourth down for Williamstown will bring out the second ball consecutive the punt. The yard line. Fourth down and about 14 for the All Jackets. Good now to kick it away. Lots of heat. It's going to be short. Takes a Williamstown bounce and will be fielded by Davis at his own 45 and tracked down. Brandon Davis on the return for the by the Bulldogs. Williamstown special teams the unit. Line. Clock stops at three minutes to go here in the ball game. Again, we're back on the air next Friday night from Erickson All Sports facility as the Princeton Tigers are in town to take on the Parkersburg South Patriots. Hope to see you. Well, we won't see you. I hope you join us for that. All right. That ought to be good. Back in my high school days, when we went to go play a team, it was a 20-minute drive, maybe a half-hour <laughs> drive. You're you know, not down for those three-hour trips? Oh, my goodness. I cannot imagine traveling Welcome to West Virginia, for, baby. I cannot imagine that. <laughs> Get on a bus, three hours, and then have to play a team like Parkersburg South. Long pass down the far sideline, almost picked, but knocked away. Not really knocked away. It bounced off a yellow jacket. I believe that was number nine, Holden McComas. You are correct, sir. Yeah, but well, the three was there too, right? Nice Holden Smith. By the yellow jacket, brings up second down. Uh, I, I don't know. That, I think the one that made the play was definitely. Um, McComas, but he threw into double coverage. Good looking ball, though. <laughs> it was. Doddridge Band is now playing uh, Shut Up and Dance, Walk the Moon. You are a machine. <laughs> <laughs> you are like my own little Shazam. <laughs> <laughs> Completed pass out to into hey, Williamstown hey, territory to the 45. It'll bring up third and short for we're, Doddridge County. We're both those kind of guys that are probably annoying uh, to others at a party because well, we, we both uh, have the ability to do that. Annoying <laughs> to me. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. It's a compulsion. I can't help it. Where they've revived Name That Tune on uh, on TV. Oh, really? Yeah, I do really well. At that. <laughs> Pretty good at that one. Can you name I it can, in three notes? Uh, some of them I can get from the clue. Oh, sweet. Lofted down the middle, and another one bounces <laughs> off the face mask of a defender. <laughs> Doddridge has already thrown three interceptions. Uh, Dixon, uh, Dixon, I believe, owns all three. Uh, Cross has technically none, but he's hit three yellow jackets <laughs> right in the numbers with a ball <laughs> that they have not been able to haul in. Minute to go in the ball game. Cross to throw again. This one is complete to James. 
And James will have the first down at the 36. Down to the 40. They keep trying to do that cutback, but the field is just not letting them. And uh, Dodgers County is hurrying up because the clock doesn't stop. And they're going to try and get another play or two in here. See if they can't get into the end zone. Just everybody go deep. I'm throwing her. That's what Cross will do into about triple coverage and another interception dropped. And that oh, one is man. probably oh, going to do, do it. it. They can't get set again. All jackets all the time. And another impressive notch in the belt for the Williamstown Yellow Jackets as they improve to 9-0 with a 55-0 dismantling of Doddridge County. Bulldogs will drop to 6-3 on the season. All I can say is, is if you want to see a good football game next week, you better get your tickets as early as you can. This is going to be a very well-filled stadium next week as the Maroon Knights come to town to take on this Williamstown team. Yeah, this, this place is going to be going to be uh, jumping next week, Williamstown and Wheeling Central. We'll be back on the air next Friday night with Princeton and Parkersburg South. That's Mike Cameron. I'm Brian Guthrie for the entire CAS 45 crew. Thanks for watching, and good night, everybody.